Hello, I'm Josef Latke from Max Planck Institute for Informatics in Saarbrücken and I'm going to present to you a method for temporally coherent triangle packing suitable for streaming rendering. The holy grail of streaming rendering and the most constrained use case is streaming photorealistic VR content at very high resolutions and very high frame rates that runs on consumer-grade hardware and provides interactive, immersive and robust experience. Usually, we are streaming from a powerful server device, which can be GPU, workstation or a cluster, over a network or hardware connection to a thin client device, such as a display, HMD or a smartphone. High network latency is the main issue. The client receives a frame which already arrives at a delay. State of the art uses image-based rendering methods to correct the frame at presentation time. This frame is warped for novel view extrapolation until the updated server frame is received. In this time, potentially large and rapid view offsets can happen, which lead to disocclusion and out-of-frame artifacts. These artifacts get worse the larger the view offset. To help hide the network latency, alternate pipeline designs emerge that rely on clients' weak rendering power. The server streams geometry together with shading data, which is usually packed into a big texture atlas. The client then uses simple forward rendering to shade the geometry using the atlas texture and provide novel views. These streaming rendering pipelines first compute potentially visible set geometry, then gather object space shading relative to this geometry and encode it into a package that is streamed to the client the client decodes the package and uses it for rendering frames. The client's rendering frame rate is decoupled from the server update frame rate. In this project, we take the PVS geometry as an input and explore the rest of the pipeline. We need to store the shading samples in a memory efficient way, not producing any visible artifacts in the novel view extrapolation. Furthermore, the Atlas frames should be temporally coherent to achieve good encoding and allow hardware accelerated texture sampling on the client. The related work methods stream the vertex positions and the shading Atlas UV coordinates. The shading samples in the Atlas are organized into quads, triangles or L's, which form a bin or a block superblock hierarchy. Imagine this is our scene view. If we zoom on the whiteboard, this is how the ground truth looks like. Imagine that we gather the whiteboard shading samples into a texture atlas in this shape. Using this atlas, the novel view extrapolation shows smeared artifacts. To achieve efficient sample distribution in shading atlas, the derivatives of UV texture coordinates between neighboring pixels of the client frame should match the UV derivatives between neighboring atlas texels. If this is not the case, we are either oversampling in our atlas or undersampling. Both of these lead to artifacts and are a poor use of the atlas space. Shading atlas streaming was introduced in 2018. This method pre-processes the scene into patches of up to three neighboring triangles and then organizes these patches into rectangular blocks. For this view, we get such shading atlas. SAS is temporally coherent and achieves great packing efficiency. However, the UV derivatives show us that the atlas shading sample distribution is not ideal. Furthermore, SAS doesn't account for perspective foreshortening and suffers from blurry artifacts due to fixed maximum block size. Desolated shading streaming packs near equilateral triangles into L shapes to achieve good packing efficiency while slanted triangles are just arranged next to each other in the atlas. For the same view, this is how the atlas looks. While TSS supports perspective foreshortening and better sample distributions, it has no temporal coherence and the UV derivatives suffer from the fixed patterns and limits of the tessellation stages. Our idea is rather simple. In order to achieve perfect UV derivatives, we store the triangles in the atlas at their projected screen space shape. Then, efficient packing becomes a challenge. We bin together triangles of similar shapes to form triangle snakes with zigzag patterns, which can be packed efficiently into a square texture. 
we first take our PVS geometry and group the triangles into bins according to their screen space shape. Then we organize the bin triangles into snake shapes, which are then finally arranged into the atlas texture. Here I will highlight in black the atlas texels, which end up being unused due to the snake patterns. Obviously, the longer the snakes are, the lower is the ratio of unused texels in the atlas. This approach shows to produce near-ideal UV derivatives while matching or outperforming the runtime, sample count and novel view quality of the existing methods. Even though the core idea is simple, I will demonstrate caveats and challenges in making such approach practical and efficient. Now I will introduce the pipeline in more detail. As already mentioned, the PVS geometry is the input to our snake pinning pipeline. As a first step, we assign each triangle to its corresponding bin. This is followed by super block management stage, where we organize the bins into rectangular blocks in the texture atlas to increase the atlas usage efficiency. Afterwards, we rasterize the PVS geometry into the shading atlas and gather the shading samples. Finally, we encode the shading atlas frame, combine it with the PVS geometry and stream it to the client. The client streams back the updated camera parameters and we close the loop. Let's have a look at the first stage where we describe the triangle shapes and assign them to bins. Three parameters to describe them all, three parameters to find them, three parameters to bring them all and in the atlas bin them. Three parameters are enough to uniquely describe triangle shape and size. We chose to flip triangles in such a way that the longest edge L forms the base of the triangle. The first two parameters are angles alpha and beta, which are adjacent to the base edge. Third parameter is the height of the triangle, denoted H. Beta is always the smaller of the angles. If this is not the case, we flip alpha and beta. This has no negative effect on the shading sample distributions. In the first step, we compute screen projection of every triangle and obtain the three parameters. Finding two triangles whose footprint matches perfectly is rather unlikely, even for large quantities of triangles. Therefore, bins need to sample the parameter space, accommodating triangles of highly similar shapes, thus representing a range of possible shapes. To achieve efficient packing, we arrange the triangles into blocks of two, which partly overlap, as shown in the picture. Next, we enter the superblock management stage. Superblocks are rectangular portions of the texture atlas. They have fixed height and variable width. The mapping from bins to superblocks is surjective. For every bin that yet wasn't assigned to any superblock, we iterate over existing superblocks in search for a superblock with enough capacity. If no such superblock is found, we create a new one. When there is no superblock that can accommodate our bin, we create a new one and its width is determined by packing the bin into a square. New unassigned bins accommodate the free space within existing superblocks. If there is not enough free space in existing superblocks, we create another superblock. As we process subsequent frames, bins shrink and grow. If we reach low occupancy within a superblock, the superblock is collapsed and the orphaned bins are looking for new superblocks again. If we fully populate the atlas and run out of space, we collapse all superblocks and recreate new ones. After the superblock management stage, we can finally gather the shading samples. In the shading gathering stage, we rasterize the PVS geometry into the texture atlas. Triangle, bin and superblock metadata are combined together to compute the correct location in the atlas. There is one problem. If we would rasterize the triangle into shading atlas using default rasterization, these would be the texels we would hit. Using this shading atlas or querying the shading would result in incorrect shading data in these red regions, because due to bilinear interpolation, these are all the texels that contribute to the final shading color at the triangle locations. Using conservative rasterization hits more samples, but there are still regions 
of the triangle that get affected by texels we didn't reach yet. These are all the samples that are needed to achieve correct shading over the whole area of the triangle. We cover all the necessary samples by offsetting the two shorter edges by half a pixel in their corresponding normal direction. This enlarges the base by padding distances P alpha and P beta, while shifting the tip by an offset T. If we offset the triangle vertices to the enlarged footprint but keep their UV coordinates untouched, the shading stretches together with the triangle footprint. This is bad, as we need to preserve the shading data within the original triangle footprint. We need to compute the new UVs in a way that the shading is naturally extended past the boundaries of the original triangle footprint. This is done by constructing planes in the barycentric coordinate space of the triangle and intersecting those planes at points A', prime, B', prime, and C'. Prime. Interpolating the UVs then results in shading that appears correctly extended. After obtaining the shading atlas frame, we and stream it to the client along with the PV at geometry. The client then uses forward rendering pipeline to render novel views by shading the PVS geometry with the shading atlas, supporting hardware accelerated texture sampling. When testing this pipeline on real scenes, we observed insufficient performance. The bins were mostly populated by exactly one triangle, resulting in a lot of wasted space. We solved this by sampling the bin space logarithmically and adding an optional bin mapping step to the pipeline, which I will introduce shortly. Furthermore, as bins describe a range of shapes, there are zigzag gaps between the triangles within a bin appearing. We fix this by extending all triangle shapes to cover the maximal allowed footprint within a bin. Finally, we achieve temporal stability by exploiting fragment shader interlock extension and implementing hysteresis and bin freeze strategy, which trade minor distortions for further temporal coherence. We observed two things. First, PVS geometry is dominated mostly by small triangles. Large triangles forming large structures in the scene, such as walls or floor, are rather small in number, compared to all the other geometry details. Second, the impact of alpha-beta derivatives on the triangle footprint increases the closer alpha and beta are to zero. This is best demonstrated visually. Assume we have two triangles with different beta angle. By increasing the beta angle for both of them by the same amount, the relative footprint and area change of the triangle with the smaller beta is larger. Thus, we decided to sample the bin space logarithmically in all three dimensions, sampling the bin space more densely closer to the origin. The second strategy to solve the scarcity of the bins is a bin mapping step. It is a series of CUDA kernels which periodically traverse the bin space, searching for scarcely occupied bins and mapping them to the closest longer bin. While this further allows minor shape distortions, we drastically reduce the wasted atlas samples. For details, we refer to our paper. Bin mapping step comes right after the assignments to bin stage. Since the bin describes a range of similar triangle shapes, zigzag patterns occur whenever neighboring triangles in a bin don't occupy the largest footprint supported by the bin. By enlarging the bin triangles to a maximum bin footprint, these high-frequency artifacts disappear. Note that the shading is again naturally extended and not stretched. In order to achieve temporal coherence, we exploit fragment shader interlock extension. This extension defines a critical section within a fragment shader. This section executes overlapping fragments sequentially in order of the primitive ID. After assigning the triangle to bin, we set up a virtual frame buffer where each pixel corresponds to one bin. Each triangle then spawns one fragment at the pixel corresponding to its bin location. Thus, triangle ordering within bin follows the primitive ID ordering. This essentially happens for free within the assignment to bin OpenGL program. We further strengthen the temporal coherence by allocating extra memory for each bin 
which allows the beam to grow in place without the need of shifting to a different superblock. Similarly, we track the bin capacity and if it shrinks below a threshold, the bin area shrinks and its superblock is notified of the change. Two more strategies are hysteresis and bin freezing. Both allow minor distortions. Hysteresis keeps track of the triangle shape in the previous frame. If the footprint change is minimal, we keep the triangle in its current bin. Similarly for bin freezing, small camera offsets result in minimal footprint changes. If the camera offset is below a given threshold, we keep the bin locations and update only the occupancy counters. We tested our method and compared it to TSS and SAS in two scenes. Robot Lab is a small indoor scene, while Viking Village is a large outdoor scene. The test walkthroughs were 660 frames long and simulated natural interaction with the scene. We tested three view cell sizes with increased rotational and translational buffer. We achieved fastest time, followed by SAS and TSS being further behind. TSS shading computation in tessellation stages is stacked by complex thread ID computation, which lowers their speed. Viking Village has details with small geometry, and thus SAS falls slightly behind for this scene, as they spend more time on memory allocations compared to the raw sample counts. The client stages for all three methods execute very efficiently on modern hardware, rendering novel frames under half a millisecond. For image quality, we used flip metric, where lower score is better. In general, our method achieves better image quality while gathering fewer shading samples, which hints that organizing shading samples into bins full of snakes is more efficient than quads and L's. For more detailed comparison, as well as other image metrics, please refer to our paper. Now I will present novel view comparison to the ground truth together with the Atlas frame. As you can see on the color map DSSI metric, our method provides near ground truth shading quality. Comparing the same view with TSS, reveals areas of the scene where they fall behind due to the fixed tessellation patterns suboptimal sample distribution. The same goes for SAS, which struggles in large triangle structures which require sampling density above the maximum block size. Stretching triangles into quads results in suboptimal sample distributions. Here you can see these effects in detail. TSS is hindered by tessellation patterns SAS by maximum block size and distortions due to mapping triangles to quads. To sum up, all three methods provide good quality novel views, but snake binning better handles corner cases where TSS and SAS struggle. Again, revisiting the UV derivative metric, our method shows near exact match between the UV derivatives in Atlas and on client's screen. The deviation from ideal in our case is due to the techniques that trade minor distortions for temporal coherence. Please note that although the UV coordinate matrix flickers in between frames, there is no flickering apparent in the novel view extrapolation. Here we demonstrate the atlas frames at 5 frames per second. The superblocks in our atlas are depicted as colorful columns. In deployment, the background of the superblock would be the average color. To evaluate the temporal coherence, we measured the compression ratio for different constant rate factors. The compression efficiency is on par with SAS, even though sharp shapes at the end and start of each bin do not compress as well as rectangular quad blocks of SAS. As expected, TSS performs much worse since it doesn't have any temporal coherence. In conclusion, we introduced a three-dimensional binning approach to group triangles based on their screen space projected footprint. We demonstrated that by packing bins into snake patterns, we achieved near ideal sample distributions. Real-time performance and novel view quality outperforms state-of-the-art approaches. Thank you for watching and I'm looking forward to your questions.